You don't know about me without you have read a book by the name of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But that ain't no matter. That book was made by Mr. Mark Twain, and he told the truth, mainly. That is nothing. I never seen anybody but lied one time or another without it was Aunt Polly or the Widow Douglas. The Widow Douglas, she took me for her son and allowed she would civilize me. The Widow, she cried over me and called me a poor lost lamb. And she called me a lot of other names too, but she never meant no harm by it. She put me in them new clothes and I couldn't do nothing but sweat and sweat and feel all cramped up. Her sister, Miss Watson, a tolerable slim old maid with goggles, took a set at me with a spelling book. She worked me middling hard for about an hour, and then the widow made her ease up. I couldn't stand it much longer. Miss Watson would say, Get your knee down. Jackson's Island, where I met Jim, Widow Douglas's runaway slave. Jim and me found a raft, and we headed out on the river. Night after night, we kept a sharp lookout for Cairo, where the Ohio River comes in. From there, we would land and try to escape far north and east, away from slavery. We had the sky up there, all speckled with stars, and we used to lay on our backs and look up at them and discuss about whether they was made or just happened. Jim allowed they was just made, but I allowed they happened. I judged it would have took too long to make so many. Jim said the moon could have laid them. Well, that looked kind of reasonable, so I didn't say nothing against it, because I've seen a frog lay almost as many, so of course it could be done. We watched the stars that fell, too, and see them streak down. Jim allowed they got spoiled thrown out of heaven. Jim talked out loud all the time. Says how the first thing he would do when he got to a free state, he would go to saving up money and never spend a single cent. And when he got enough, he would buy his wife, which was owned on a farm to where Miss Watson lived. And then they would both work to buy the two children. And if their master wouldn't sell them, why, they'd get an abolitionist to go and steal them. It froze me to hear such talk. I went looking for a light. By and by, one showed. Jim sings out, We safe, Huck! We safe! Jump and crack your heels! It's Cairo, Huck! I says, I'll take the canoe and see, Jim. It mightn't be, you know. When I was 50 yards off, Jim says, There you go, the old true Huck, the only white gentleman ever keep his promise to old Jim. Right then, along comes a skiff with two men in it, with guns, and they stop, and I stop. One of them says, What's that yonder? A piece of raft, I said. Any men on it? Only one, sir. Well, there's five slaves run off tonight up yonder above the head of the bends. Is yours white or black? I didn't answer up prompt. I tried to, but the words wouldn't come. 
I was trembling because I got to decide forever betwixt two things and I knowed it. And I knowed if I lied, I'd go to hell. He's And I said, he's white. And I said, he's white. And I said to myself, all right then, if I got to betray in Jim or go to hell, I'll go to hell. And for a starter, I'd steal Jim out of slavery to freedom. <laughs> <laughs>